Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's live stream. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time it is where you are. I uh, hope you're all having a, a, a lovely, lovely afternoon or day or morning again. I uh, don't know where you're all joining us from. If you're, if you're interested, uh, feel free to drop some flags in the chat as usual. I love to see where people are joining from. Good afternoon from France. Bonjour. Um, the bot press offices are located in Quebec City and Montreal, so most of us are bilingual um, in English and French and a bunch of other languages as well, so i uh, love to hear it. Uh, I've, got, um, I've got some news for everybody today, so a couple of quick things. As you'll see, first of all, um, I am alone. I am without a co-host today. I'm without Patrick. Uh, we're trying something new. I am going to be running uh, you all solo through uh, uh, some tips and, and best practices today. So uh, it's just going to be, we're, we're going to spend some quality time together. It's going to be Robert. It's going to be the bot press users. We're going to have a nice time. Uh, it's going to be great. Uh, second thing is if you do have questions, as always, pop them in chat. Uh, Gordy, Patrick, Guillermo, we're all here uh, to answer some of your questions. So if I can't uh, respond to something on stream, we've got people in chat that are uh, here to field your questions. So as usual, you know, uh, don't be shy, ask questions, um, particularly about like what I'm going to be showing you today on stream. Don't be shy. If you need clarification on something, um, no problems there. All right. And now for probably the announcement I'm like the most happy about or the most excited about. Um, we've received some feedback on our, our recordings of these live streams about like, I tend to digress a lot, which is like very true. Um, but in reality, I think the um, what's happening is a lot of people have questions and a lot of you guys are coming from different levels of experience on BotPress. So I'm very happy to share that in a couple of weeks, so uh, not next week, but the week after, we'll be having two sets of live streams. One for people that are beginners or like low coders or no coders like me. Uh, so those, if you've liked my streams and you found them useful, um, come hang out. And then Jesse, our other co-host, is going to be hosting ones for, that are for um, power users or advanced users, people that are programmers or come from developer backgrounds. Uh, so ideally, you'll be covered in, you can come to both if you'd like. I mean, hey, we're always happy to spend time together. Um, but we were sensing like there was a, a bit of a disconnect between some people in the audience and the content they were getting. Um, so we want to provide as much content as possible for all of you. I mean, we're here to support you, uh, make sure you're successful in BotPress. So um, uh, so that's the plan. So stay tuned. As usual, those uh, calendar registration, the uh, events will be available uh, within Discord. So you'll be able to find the ones that you want to attend there. Uh, if you attend both, I'll be stoked. Um, uh, so that's uh, that's the plan. That's what's going to be going on there. Uh, again, one hour streams as usual, so on and so forth. Okay, um, I'm seeing a lot of uh, happiness in the chat. That's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'll dive right in for today's lesson. I've got a couple of best practices and tips uh, lined up. If you don't know me, hi, I'm Robert. I'm on the BotPress team. Uh, I am here to represent all of our like low code, no code, non programmer, developer background people. Um, I know we have a lot of devs, uh, particularly in the audience, or also that use BotPress as well. Um, so I'm hoping you'll get something out of today's lessons too. Uh, I used to be in, in, a, in a, a much different life. I used to be a teacher. I taught at universities, so um, I, I'm definitely bringing like a teaching kind of energy to today's stream. Um, so I'm hoping that you'll all find this useful. I'm going to dive right in, and as usual, just ask questions. Um, if you're watching this recording on YouTube, no need to ask questions. Uh, but leave them in the comments below if you have uh, if you have thoughts or concerns, uh, and we can um, we'll hang out. We'll uh, we'll get you some answers. Okay. Uh, yeah. PH Power. These events are recorded. You can find previous ones on YouTube. Uh, we have uh, recordings are all on the the playlist on our YouTube channel. Okay. So here we go. We'll get started with um, today's lesson. Uh, as you see here, I have an empty bot in front of me. I've got uh, nothing going on, totally brand new. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is start by showing you all some best practices for the capture card. I think um, after spending some time on Discord, a lot of the questions seem to revolve around like, how can I best use this? Or there are some features here that I, I don't really know what to do with and, and how can I, um, what can I do with them? So let me show you um, very quickly Bum, bum, bum. We'll jump right in with a single choice capture card. All right. Um, by the way, I have to say, if you don't know what things like capture cards are, or if there's things that terms that I use that are confusing you, uh, there's a, a YouTube playlist on our channel called um, the BotPress Dictionary, which covers definitions for um, all of these terms. So the first thing I want to show you is uh, 
what do I do when I ask the user a question? So I've, I've asked for some kind of input. I want an answer. Uh, I want to store it in a variable. But my user doesn't get it right the first time, and I'm not really sure like what I want to do after. Um, that's what retries are for. So let's say, for example, I'll ask my user, which do you prefer? And then I want to add some options. So I'll ask them if they prefer soup or stew. And then what if they answer something that's like complete gibberish? And I'm like, ah, I, I, you need to try that again. That's what retries are for. So if you hop into advanced configuration here and you hit retries, there are two options. The first is number of retries. So this is how many times your bot is going to try again to get a, an answer from your user that makes sense or fits within their parameters. And you can also customize a retry message. So you can say something like, oops, uh, didn't catch that. Can you try again? And so this is a really simple way of kind of adding uh, like a validation step or uh, a loop so that your bot will make sure that your user sends in um, something, uh, something that makes sense. OK, so let's try this out really simply. Uh, let's not add any other options. Let's just do this and see if it works. So I'll say hi. And then I get asked for a super stew. And I'll put a bunch of the letter J. And then right away, I can see I get a retry message. Uh, I'll try one more time. And we get that again. Remember, we sent this because we set the number of retries to two. And if I do one more time, uh, we see capture variable has failed because I haven't put any uh, information there that makes uh, any kind of sense. All right, uh, so th those are retries. This is a feature that kind of e like flow flies under the radar or is causing a bit of confusion. So I thought I would just uh, start today's stream by getting this this out of the way. Um, bum, bum, bum. How can you validate if the user entering his date of birth, for example, in the wrong format? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I, Patrick, I, I think if you're in the chat, you can also help me uh, respond to this one. But uh, the date of birth um, variable should be stored in the correct format. So what's going to happen is uh, it, it will your bot will recognize it as gibberish if they put it in the wrong format, um, i.e. E date time. But I see Patrick is typing. Uh, so we'll see what he says. Uh, yeah, Sabrina's got a great answer for you. Botpress is hosted on the cloud. We also have V12 for um, if you're interested in on-prem services as well. But uh, what I'm showing you today, the Botpress cloud, this is entirely fully managed. So we um, this is we manage the hosting for you. Bum, bum, bum. All right. Okay, so this is retries. If there are no questions about retries, I think it's a fairly straightforward feature. You are more than welcome to ask. Um, but otherwise, I'll move along with today's lesson. Uh, so again, with this capture card, what if we're running into problems with the capture? So they, we, they've retried a couple of times, uh, and that worked. But they, your user realizes, this isn't the question I want to answer, or I want to do something else, or go to another part in the flow, or I don't want to be stuck in this loop of like having to send you an answer to my question. I'm not enjoying that from a user's perspective. Well, capture cards support the ability to cancel. And what canceling does is just allows your user to uh, say, nah, I don't want to answer this question, or I want to do something else. Uh, let's, let's move on to another topic. So let's move on. Let's check out cancellation. So again, advanced configuration, this is going to be your best friend. Uh, so if you hop into the advanced configuration menu and you check out cancellation, again, you'll see more um, options to modify this, uh, this capture card. So you can think of this as adding layers of complexity to your capture card or making it a bit more powerful or robust uh, to, to preempt some of these use cases. So you can toggle on whether or not you want the user to be able to cancel it. Um, so for example, if this was... Uh, uh, like integral to the business or the experience of your bot, there's no need to cancel. Uh, so you would you would toggle this off, for example, and confirm before canceling. Do you want to set up a confirmation? Uh, different UX, so user experience designers or theories will tell you uh, you should put a confirmation or you shouldn't. Really, it's going to depend on you and how you want to um, uh, set up your bot. So let's con so and then confirm cancel message. This is what's going to show up when your user indicates a desire to cancel, and your bot will say something like, um, are you sure you want to cancel or move to something else, so on and so forth. So here, I'll say something like, uh, would you like to cancel? And just leave it a super simple message like that. And let me show you how this works. So um, again, BotPress supports, uh, uh, most of you will be hopefully familiar with Intense. If you're not, YouTube playlist about all of this. Um, but I'll say hi. 
I get asked a question and I'm like, actually, I don't know if this is a question I want to answer. Uh, so I'll say cancel. And then despite the fact that cancel isn't an option or it isn't something that I've taught my capture card to look out for, uh, we get um, the, the cancellation confirmation. So my bot is asking me what I like to cancel and uh, I'll say, yeah, why not? So then we get that confirmation message and that's great. And you see capture variable canceled, conversation ended, uh, bing bang, we're done. Uh, so that's cancellation. So again, between retries and cancellation, uh, the idea here or the goal is to cover a lot of different uh, use cases and edge cases and your user's ability to make a decision or desire to make a decision without having to add additional loops or paths. Um, so the point here really is to simplify or drill down on the amount of nodes and cards that you're building um, to make your experience as a bot builder easier or simpler. Uh, so by adding layers of complexity or layer or like additional features to these capture cards, you can reduce the amount of times that you have to send um, your user down that down various paths. Okay, um, so I see a bunch of questions coming through in chat. Um, so Patrick is doing and Sabrina are doing a great job of uh, answering those. So I hope that you're all getting the the answers. Uh, if you're watching the YouTube recording of this, I see the several people are typing message, which is always great. It's really nice to have a, a lively conversation over here. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna move right along with uh, this kind of capture card best practices uh, tips and tricks lesson. So we've ca we've covered cancellation, uh, and now let's say so we've asked our user about soup and stew, and uh, we're just not getting anywhere. The the conversation's not right. Uh, it's not working. They they seem to be. Maybe they've misunderstood the question. Maybe I've typed it wrong. Maybe something isn't working. And I want a way to capture these users that are um, not achieving a successful outcome or resolution using this card without sending them down the error workflow, without just saying like, oops, something went wrong. Um, too bad, so sad. So we want to, the, um, this is the idea of conversation design, right? Is being able to support these kinds of edge cases, make your user feel like they're uh, part of a satisf satisfying or fulfilling conversation and achieving some kind of value at the end of it. This is how we do this. So again, we're going to go back into our advanced configuration menu. We're going to add another superpower to our capture card. Uh, and this is probably my favorite one. So we'll head into the advanced, advanced configuration. Um, and what we'll do is we'll toggle on the ability to add transition to handle failure. So this is, I think, pretty self-explanatory, um, unless you're me, in which case you're like, I don't, I don't know how this works. Uh, and so it's, it's nice to see an example. So add transition to handle failure. What this does is if your bot has no idea what your user is trying to uh, input here, it doesn't make any sense. We've done all the retries. Uh, so then you'll have noticed, eagle-eyed viewers will see, We've got another option here in our in our card. Uh, so we've got the on failure transition that we can draw a path from. And so what's going to happen here is if our user doesn't successfully choose soup or stew, uh, and we want to send them down a different path, maybe ask them a different question, maybe ask them to send an email. Uh, so we can say, hey, send an email to support at x.com if that's something you're interested in. Uh, you could send them a phone number. Really, there's any uh, unlimited number of options that you can support them. This is where you would do it from. So I'll take my cursor. I'll draw a path from the on failure option, and I'll just draw another node. And uh, just for the purposes of this example, I'll just show you a really simple text message that I would send here, maybe something like, um, oops. Uh, your answer didn't make sense to me. Uh, can you uh, email me at, and then I'll just put my email. So this is what's going to happen on failure. On failure means if I failed to, to collect a variable or a response here. Um, so as usual, bot, bot building best practice, uh, let's make sure that it makes sense and that it works. So I say, hi, which do you prefer? Uh, I'm going to say a bunch of the letter J. I get retried again, and I should get retried one more time. And then now, if I put in a bunch of J's for the third time, I get that uh, beautiful failure message that we wrote. And so uh, what I really want to emphasize to all of you here is more nodes doesn't necessarily, or like more cards, or a bigger, more complex bot doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a better bot, uh, both for your the, in terms of like your user experience, but also for you as the builder. I think one of the um, one of the the key things that I've come to learn over the last couple of weeks 
is that if you can make the bots simpler and if we can build features that makes bots easier to build for you, uh, but equally robust and powerful and able to support these edge cases, it's really a win-win all around. So um, as you can see here, we covered like a, a bunch of different um, things that can happen on a capture card. And we only have one node and, and uh, two nodes and two cards, right? So we captured like what happens if a user needs to answer a question again? What if they don't want to answer that question? Um, what if they need to um, ask a different question or if they failed to answer altogether? Um, and so the what I'm showing you here is the capture card is really robust in the different ways that it can support all of these edge cases um, without you having to build additional paths or nodes or kind of like go crazy um, with all of the, the building and whatnot. Uh, okay, so bum, bum, bum. ah, Jeremy, thank you for posting that really nice um, overview of what I've of what I've written out here, of what I've shown here. Um, that's really great. Okay, um, are there questions about uh, capture cards or retries? I know that there are like beautiful questions in chat about knowledge bases. Um, I see all of your questions. Sabrina is answering them. Uh, we are working on making everything better all the time. Uh, so if you've got feedback or questions, uh, please leave them on our Discord. That's um, we love to see it. Okay, uh, if you are a, I don't want to say fan because I feel like that's absurd, but if, you're, if you pay attention to our YouTube channel, uh, you'll remember that I recently posted a video about adding a, a fallback for ChatGPT. So um, what happens is if you ask your, your user asks a question and you can't answer it from your knowledge base, uh, you can have ChatGPT take over and answer a question uh, for you. So let's say you don't have the answer to it, but you still want to enable that user, uh, we support the ability to just kind of build in ChatGPT from the get-go and you don't have to fuss about any of this. So let's say, for example, uh, you have this capture card kind of situation. It's not going well. So I want to support the ability to uh, do something else. What I'll do now is I'll walk you all through how to build that live. And then again, if you have questions about things like the AI task that I'm going to use or um, the way that I, I built my nodes and my paths, uh, to keep it as simple as possible, feel free to ask. Uh, so let me just remove what I have going on here, and we'll uh, we'll start from scratch again. Bum, bum, bum. If you're interested in the AI task, we've got additional like tutorials and thing and news coming out about that as well. Um, but we're also super interested in your feedback on the AI task. I know that's uh, it's a big feature that a lot of people love to use, and a lot of people have very strong feelings about, which is nice. Uh, it means that um, that means that you all are motivated, which I love to see. Okay, so to illustrate this example, I'll use a capture card again, since today we're talking about capture card best practices. Uh, and I'll start with a raw input card. So I'll just, for this raw input card, what I'll say is just what is your question? And I'll allow my user to query my knowledge base. Now, you'll notice I don't have a knowledge base, so let's just hop in and upload one uh, right away. Once again, if you are like a, if you're a, a bot press, you know, you hang out on our YouTube channel, uh, you'll notice that I often use, um, uh, while, just while this is uploading, I'll, I'll digress a bit. Uh, I often use the same novel, so just a, a PDF copy of a book that I have uh, as my knowledge base. Um, I uh, Fun fact about Robert, I have a PhD in English. So uh, this is a part of my, my doctoral research was, uh, was the, this was one of the novels that I, I researched and wrote about. And so my, the, the reason I use this to test is because I can tell immediately if my bot is answering questions correctly or not. Uh, and that's, um, uh, that makes it really easy for me to, to test what, and verify whether or not my bot is hallucinating. OK, so knowledge base uploaded. That's beautiful. Good stuff. Now I want to allow my user to query it. So what I'm going to do is I'll enable knowledge answering, of course, because we want our bot to answer questions uh, from this node. OK, so now there are two edge cases I have to support here. I have to support if I do have an answer, so if my bot has an answer from this knowledge base, and if my bot doesn't have an answer from this knowledge base. Those are really the only two um, cases that we need to support here. I'll, I'll maybe take a, a brief aside uh, just to just to note here that this is um, and I'm, I'm definitely like speaking above my pay grade here like I'm not a developer but this kind of um, if yes then do this and if no then do this kind of logic that's essential to programming right this is um, uh, my understanding of programming is that we're supporting these kinds of if then statements so what we're doing here is we're saying if my bot has a, an answer from a knowledge base do this 
And if my bot has, doesn't have an answer from the knowledge base, do this. Um, I bring this up because uh, a conversation I heard a couple of days ago and has stuck with me ever since is that in building a bot, you are essentially kind of learning uh, basic programming principles in a really user-friendly and really easy way. So uh, if what you want to do is do double duty and build something like a customer service bot or a personal, you know, a, a studying assistant, but also you want to learn programming principles at the same time, it's a really intuitive, BotPress is a really intuitive way to learn that um, without having to deal with like a Code Academy course. By the way, I love Code Academy, but um, if you're interested in getting like some practical um, experience and the consequences or the effects of programming, um, I kind of love BotPress for that. Okay. So digression aside, let's cover these edge cases. So uh, while I was talking about if then, I hope that some of you in the audience, your kind of alarm bells were going off and uh, you were thinking of, okay, well, if then statements to me means flow logic cards. That's correct, right? Because what we're doing is we're um, inputting some kind of logic. If we're doing this, then do this. Uh, and we want to send our user down different paths based on what they've, uh, what they've selected. So because we have two cases, Yes, answer from knowledge base, no answer from knowledge base. I'll pop in my two expression cards. Um, and what's going to happen here is based on what I type in, our bot, our user will get sent down various paths. So um, for the first one here, I'm going to turn off AI generation because I can write this on my own. <laughs> uh, and for the condition, so what's going to happen to send a user down this path, what I'll do is use curly braces and I'll type in turn dot knowledge agent dot responded. All right. Kind of a, a teachable moment here. Uh, what I'm going to say here is this is a variable that's being stored as a Boolean. So if you've watched our videos on variables, uh, you would know that a Boolean uh, stores information as true or false. So uh, another way to think about that is like yes or no. So this variable is asking our bot, hey, did you find an answer in that knowledge base? Were you able to find the answer to the user's question? Um, if yes, then let's send them down this path, and I'll just put a node there for now. How do we uh, say no? How do we cover the case where it's like, okay, did you not find an answer in that knowledge base? Um, this is like a fun little programming thing that I learned. <laughs> um, but if you place an exclamation mark at the front of this Boolean variable, what we're doing is we're negating it. So we're identifying it as false, or what we're saying is you weren't able to find an answer um, Bum, 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 from the uh, from the knowledge base. So I'll say turn dot knowledge agent dot responded. And so now we've got both of those edge cases covered, right? We've got the idea that um, if it if you do have an answer from the knowledge base here, and if you don't have an answer from the knowledge base, uh, go down this path. So we've got those edge cases covered. I'm gonna take a breather and maybe come uh, see check out chat, see if you have any questions. Um, this video will be posted on YouTube. Yeah, Redbot, it will be. However, I do also have a tutorial on YouTube covering this exact thing. So if you want to uh, watch that as well, I cover this exact bot that I'm about to build and this exact workflow. So that's already up there for you. OK, Allison, you have a great question. Um, uh, so I'm going to answer a couple of these. So uh, under AI task, there's task instructions and task input. I'm going to cover those in like five to seven minutes. So if you just sit tight uh, and take a look, uh, I'm going to cover the difference because we will be using the AI task for our chat GPT fallback. So that's a great, um, those are great questions. Uh, for your questions about uh, are there mul like multiple sequences of code? What type of code is this? Where can I learn the very basics of this? And is there a list of these lines of code? Um, one of the things that things that I've seen a lot of people ask for is kind of like a cheat sheet or um, for a no coder or low coder, what are some places that I can just copy and paste uh, these simple types of code so I can uh, do this for myself? So if that's a resource you'd like to see, let us know because that's definitely something I'm interested in putting together for all of you. Um, Bum, 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 so on and so forth. And then I see, can you go through if and that again? Uh, what I'll do is when I've put everything together, I'll walk you through from start to finish what all the logic steps are. So you can see what my bot is doing and how I've kind of constructed it that way. So maybe just watch, um, uh, stay tuned until I, I, when I finish this bot. Okay. All right, so let's get the easy one out of the way first. Uh, if my bot was able to answer from a knowledge base, I'll just send a simple send message card that says something like, uh, you've got your answer. So uh, what this does is just confirms for the user that they received their answer. And 
now we get into the meaty bit or the kind of like, um, uh, how do I know, what do I do if my bot doesn't have an answer from the knowledge base, but I still want to support this user? So uh, we'll get into the fun stuff. I'll pop over an AI task here into this node. And now we get into the difference between task instructions and task input. So the task instructions, um, as is written in this box, the task instructions are you're telling your bot what you want it to do. So you're kind of describing this as you would to an employee, for example, or like a colleague. Um, so what I'll say here is I'll say something like answer the user. Uh, so this is what you want it to do really simply. And then I wanted to store the answer uh, in a variable called user answer. Uh, so again, what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, answer the user. And when you've got that answer, store it in this variable, this little chunk, so I can refer to it later. The AI task input, this is the thing that actually gets sent to ChatGPT. So uh, what you can think of this is like, if you ever interacted with ChatGPT, this is what you'd be sending them. So what we want to send here is the question, right? What we want to send here is what our user said, such that uh, we'll get a, a nice response from ChatGPT. So I'll say that uh, user input is equal to, and now everybody buckle up. I'm going to show you a pro tip. I'm going to show you like a hacky way to work with BotPress that's really beautiful um, that I'm going to, I, I promise, because I know you're going to ask, I'll provide some documentation and tutorials around this in the future. Um, but I'm going to show you how to get your user's question or the last message they sent. So uh, the way to do this is we'll use curly braces again, and we'll say event.preview. And so what event.preview is, is it's your user's last message. So the last thing they sent. Uh, this could be uh, a question or a piece of text. But remember, what I'm saying here is uh, take what my user put in into this raw input and place it here and send it to ChatGPT so I can get an answer. Um, so that's what's going on with event.preview. I'm taking my user's last message, and I'm saying, I don't know the answer to this, but ChatGPT probably does. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have them take over. So when we talk about ChatGPT fallback or ChatGPT takeover, uh, this is what's going on. So you're just asking ChatGPT for backup. Think of this like an insurance policy um, for your bot. How to avoid hallucinations from GPT? This is a great question. You are uh, one of millions of people, I suppose, to, to ask this. Uh, in general, uh, there are two like different streams of thought here. The first is we're working on uh, the bot press side of things, making sure that answers are more accurate and valuable and um, useful to your users. But equally, as Patrick says, a uh, step-by-step thinking. So for example, uh, minimizing the scope of the questions that you're asking, minimizing the kinds of questions that you're asking your user to support. So uh, as you know, I'm sure ChatGPT doesn't do well with really broad open-ended questions. But the more specific you are, uh, the better you, you will be able to prompt ChatGPT. So for example, um, uh, you might have seen a lot of things about like prompt engineering or prompting trips for prompting tricks for LLMs. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> Connor has a great tip here. Treat the bot like a baby with no emotions or feelings. Yeah, be as specific as possible. Uh, another way of putting this is like, if you've ever had a really good manager at your job, you know they are specific and direct and clear uh, with the instructions and the expectations. So the more specific you are, uh, the better you will get at, um, at prompting good answers from ChatGPT. Uh, OK, so last thing is store result and variable. Remember, we asked our bot to store the answer from ChatGPT in the variable called user answer. So we'll just create that super simply, and we are done. OK, eagle-eyed viewers among you will notice that there is one thing missing here. We've asked ChatGPT this question. We've received it. We've gotten an answer. But how does our user get that answer? So. The way that BotPress manages this is we reduce the amount of times that uh, things happen like automatically or by default. So you have additional granular control over uh, what's when your user receives this answer. So for example, um, what I'll do here is I'll make sure they get the answer right away. So I'll just send a simple send message card with our variable. One of the examples I'm going to show you later on is what do you want to do if maybe you ask uh, the user for a question, and before you give them the answer, uh, you want to ask them for their email. So you're kind of saying like, hey, I have the answer for you, but before that, can I get your email? Um, that's an example I'll show you in the, in the later half of the stream. 
But the point here is uh, you can fiddle with the order in which you place these things and send an answer and retrieve an answer uh, so that the conversation is valuable both for you and your user, uh, particularly for things like lead gen. I know that's a, a big uh, between a lot of you, uh, but also for more creative things like um, I know some of you are building games or stories or narrative based bots. Uh, I love to see all of this. So um, hopefully the, the addition control that you have over when your users receive answers means that you're able to get more creative about uh, about the user experience and it doesn't feel so stale uh, okay so uh, if I've done this correctly and and I would like to remind everyone it's very possible that I haven't because uh, you know we all make mistakes and that's fine uh, but the point here is um, this should work so I'm gonna restart the emulator here and I'm gonna ask my bot a question so I'll say hi I get prompted for a question, so I'll say, who is Rachel Verinder? As in the example that I posted on YouTube, this is a character that is not in this novel. So my bot shouldn't have the answer. It shouldn't be able to answer this from the knowledge base because this is gibberish to it. It has no idea who this person is. So I'll say, who is this? And great, this worked beautifully. So you, see, you, sh you should see here at the beginning, no valid answer found from the knowledge base because it has no idea who this person is. This is not a person that exists in this novel. Um, then we're able to capture the variable. So this is my question. And then AI task completed. So whenever you see something here in purple, this is like we've prompted ChatGPT to do something. We've uh, successfully completed our AI task. And then I get the correct answer, which is like, she's not in this novel, but she's in a different one. So um, in one really clean motion, we were able to get the correct answer despite the fact that uh, um, maybe the user was wrong or they were mistaken in, uh, in asking about this character from this novel. Okay, so uh, as promised, what I'm going to do now is, because uh, that was a very long portion of this lesson, I'm going to walk through step by step uh, what the different logic steps are here, because I think there are um, a few different things that perhaps we as, as BotPress team members take for granted that might take a bit of cottoning onto or getting used to um, from your perspective. Tony, these will be uploaded to YouTube, so uh, I'll catch you over there. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, so uh, from the beginning here, what happens is our user gets prompted for a question. So my bot asks my user, what is your question? And uh, I, as the user, want to ask a question. I want to ask a question about this book that I read that maybe you know an answer to or maybe you don't, and um, what happens next. So at this step, our bot collects this question takes it in, listens for a question, and then immediately queries the knowledge base. Or in other words, it looks through the book that I uploaded earlier in my knowledge base and tries to find an answer to this. And of course, it does it way faster than a human can because of AI, right? Because we use AI on the back end to query that knowledge base. So within a matter of like milliseconds, my bot is able to look at my knowledge base and determine whether or not I have an answer to this question. If I do have an answer to this question, it'll spit it out right away and bing, bang, boom, we're done. Those are really simple and hopefully all of your use cases are gonna be that simple, um, but we are designing robust software here. So we are making sure that we're covering all of the, all of the use cases. Okay, uh, so then if I do have the correct answer and everything goes smoothly, I just use this variable. So if you have answered the question from your knowledge base, send the user down this path. So that's what's going on here. That's what this path is indicating, or this line connecting these nodes. The more interesting thing, and I think the thing that um, is what drives a lot of the value of BotPress is that if you can't answer this question, there are still ways that we can make sure that the um, we can still make sure that the uh, the bot is valuable or useful for our user or our conversation partner um, without having to uh, you know build intricate software, because that's out of mine included, a lot of our, our capabilities. So what I've done here is I've said, if you're not able to answer this question from your knowledge base, uh, send the user down this path. And remember, we indicated this negation, or we identified this Boolean as false, if we want to get all developer about it, um, by using a simple exclamation mark. And this means no, or this means false. OK, so now the user has been sent down this path. I don't have an answer to your question, but maybe ChatGPT does. That's where we get to the AI task. Um, Allison, I know you were asking about the difference between the instructions and the input. So the instructions, like I said, this is where you're telling your bot what to do. This is the bot press side of things. So I'm saying, hey, bot, I want you to answer my user. And whatever you get from ChatGPT, store it in this variable. 
And then for the AI task input, this is what's getting sent to ChatGPT. We keep these separate because your bot is not ChatGPT. You're just using it for backup or you're, you're like, hey, I need a hand. Um, I might be showing my age here, but if any of you are familiar with the show, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Um, it was a game show that aired in the 2000s. One of the options, if you didn't know the answer to a question, was to phone a friend. Think of this like you're phoning a friend. You're asking ChatGPT, your friend, a question. So we've uh, sent the user input, so in other words, the question, to ChatGPT. And remember, our most previous user's message is being stored in the variable event.preview. Uh, and so we store that variable or we store that result in user answer. And this is how we'll be able to uh, reference it later in the, uh, in the conversation. And our final, final step is we send a send message card with the answer at user answer uh, to make sure that our, our user is able to get the response from ChatGPT. So um, one thing I want to acknowledge here is like, this is uh, a really, <laughs> I mean, like to me, this is like magic, right? This is a really smooth way of entering conversation um, that can do a lot of different things that can answer questions that are not just about a book. So for example, let's try again, um, but I'll say something like, what is a burrito? So let's say a user ends up in your talking to your bot, but is like totally wrong about the expectations and um, is, is like, well, I'm not even talking about the same subject. Old style bot building or old school bots would be like, I can't handle this, I'm giving up, goodbye. Um, but instead, because of the AI task, we're able to get a beautiful answer about a burrito. Um, as you can tell, I am hungry. It is approaching my lunchtime. Uh, so we'll get a lot more food-related questions. Uh, OK, so I see some great questions coming through in chat. I, I saw an earlier one asking me to do um, some information about tables and selectors, uh, Spaceman, Z Spaceman. Um, that's a really good question. I've saved tables for future live streams because that's kind of out of the scope of today's lesson. Um, but it's definitely on the syllabus that I have. Uh, my my uh, university lecturer is like showing through here. But tables are definitely on the syllabus. So stay tuned uh, both for future videos and live streams about that. So that's a great question. Um, Next, I see a question about querying uh, multiple information from knowledge bases, putting them in an array, or using a carousel. Um, again, those are uh, things that I have scheduled for future lessons. So uh, please um, uh, stay tuned for all of those. OK, uh, so that's ChatGPT, uh, the fallback. There are a couple of different features or things that are, are relevant here um, that I want to show. I see a question before I, I get into that. Um, how can you get the AI task to only answer questions on a specific subject? Uh, this is where prompting comes in. So if you've ever played around with ChatGPT and you've said things like, uh, if you don't know anything about this, don't respond. Or if you don't know anything about this, um, only include information about X or uh, be as specific as possible. This is where um, the ability to prompt comes into play. Uh, and the, again, step-by-step -step thinking, the more specific you are, uh, the better answers you'll get. OK. Um, so we've done a lot of work today on the capture cards and asking users questions. Um, and if you've built bots for a while, or if you're new and you kind of want to know, like, what are some of the best practices or tips about asking users questions that I can, uh, implement in my own bot building journey, um, uh, I'm going to show you now. So one of the things to keep in mind is when you're asking someone a question or, uh, you're asking a user a question. You don't always want to prompt them with the same question over and over. So a lot of the time, uh, users have asked us like, hey, I want my bot to stop and listen, but I don't want to prompt a user for a question. So I don't want to keep saying, do you have a question? Do you have another question? Do you have another question? I want my bot to just sit there patiently and wait um, to see what my user says and then act based on that. Um, so this is one of the most beautiful features. I like honestly screamed when I saw that this feature was live because many people, myself included, have been asking for this. And it's really simple, but really powerful, which I think sums up BotPress uh, in a nutshell. So let me start from a, a blank slate here. And I'll start with a new capture card. So in the standard node, um, I'll just place, as usual, um, perhaps a raw input. And one of the things I want you all to notice here and if you've built bots on BotPress for a while, um, this should make sense to you, or you should notice this and be as excited as I am. Uh, in question to ask the user, you will see this is no longer a mandatory field. And what that means is you don't need to place 
a question in order to receive input from a user. And this is a really simple, but a really powerful feature because what it does is your bot is listening to your user without having to ask a question. Particularly for those of you who are interested in conversation design or making your bots sound more natural and conversational, uh, you'll know if you've ever spoken to another human that we don't always ask questions, right? Um, your life is not always an interview. So if you've ever been on a really bad date, for example, it can feel often like, uh, uh, and I went to school here. What about you? And I grew up here. What about you? And I do this for work. What about you? And that's not ideal, right? That's not really ideal conversation design. Uh, and so what we wanted to do was make these feel more natural in a way that was really simple. So we removed the forcing you to ask a question, but kept the ability to um, store user input. So let's test this out in, in an example. And I'll connect these. And just at the beginning, I'll say, um, hello. So I'll send my user a simple hello message. And uh, in my raw input card, question to ask the user is blank. So if I say hi, I want you all to take a clear look at my emulator. Um, you'll see here capturing variable prompt is active, waiting for user input. So this is this to me is like I'm hilarious. I'm I'm over the moon. This is amazing because what's happening here is my bot is listening, is waiting to hear information from my user without asking them a question. So the whole purpose of a capture card is to um, receive your user's input and use that to make the, the conversation more conversational. Uh, and so this goes a long way in those of you who have been asking, how can I make my bot uh, more natural? Or how can I receive information without prompting my user for a question over and over again? Um, those are, uh, those are, are things that I, I've seen dozens of questions about every week uh, on our server. So I hope that you will find this feature valuable. I hope that this is something um, that you, uh, you find useful. Uh, Xpander TN, can that user response be put into the knowledge base or data tables? Uh, so um, we don't support the ability to dynamically updo update knowledge bases currently. Um, for tables, they should support variables. Oh. <laughs> hmm. I have been muted. How about now? I've swapped over to my MacBook mic, which we don't love. How about now? <laughs> Are we back? Can you all hear me? Are we good? I see a lot of I can hears. We can hear you, JB. All right, cool. I'm going to continue talking. Five, five out of five on sound. That's I love this rating system. Bum, bum, bum. OK, so uh, just to cover what happened here, um, raw input capture cards, or all capture cards, no longer require, um, uh, no longer require you to ask a question. So uh, I, will leave, I will leave that at that. I see a question uh, about adding a response to data tables. Uh, I, I, like I said previously, I'm going to leave tables for a separate live stream because I want to keep the scope of this one really tight and focused. But do know that I've added this to the list, uh, and I have um, uh, I have added this to the list of things that I, I need to talk about, and I'll talk about them in future live streams or videos. Uh, when did this when did this get released? This was like kind of a stealth patch that we uploaded or um, that we pushed last week. Uh, so if you uh, this has been live since last Friday, but uh, I really wanted to highlight this for you all because I know this is something that um, a lot of you have asked for. Okay, I saw one question earlier up in chat about. Um, Bum, ba, da, bum. Can you show us how to make this bot remember the context of previous answers and questions? I have an entire stream planned just for this because I can't cover this in 15 minutes. It's a, a really core central topic. But Daniel, um, I see your question. What I'll say is there's currently a really great tutorial from one of our power users, Simply Great Games, about managing this exact thing. So if you check out the tutorial section on our Discord, you'll see um, uh, they've uploaded a really great tutorial there. So start with that. And then if you have questions, just come ask us on Discord or hop into a future live stream uh, where I will be talking about um, making your bot remember. Or another way of saying this is like having ChatGPT style memory or custom memory, because uh, this is core to the bot building process. So great question. Uh, I will defer to a future lesson on my syllabus, but uh, I see your question. I hear you, um, et cetera. OK. Um, anyone got a link to that? Can somebody link to the tutorials channel, that uh, specific tutorial, um, someone on the bot press team? Because I'm sure other people will ask this question as well. 
All right. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, I'm going to stop here with the raw capture card examples. And what I'll do is maybe show you all um, something a bit more fun or like fun for me. Um, I want to combine some of the things that we've spoken about in this lesson already. So things like capturing information, asking your user for information, but also with things like flow logic. So um, in this very, like, uh, we can say embryonic version of uh, prompting and programming knowledge and developer principles, et cetera, for non-programmers like myself, um, this is a great way to kind of learn through those things by, um, by, uh, by doing things live. So. Uh, we'll take a fun example. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I had a user on the Discord server ask, can I add a pin to my bot? And I was like, there's got to be a way to do this. Um, but what I'll do is I'll show you the way that I came up with this or the, the way that I would, uh, would solve this. So um, can I add a pin to my bot or a password? So let's say uh, you're building a bot and you kind of want it to be like a, a whimsical, by kind of situation, maybe that fits the theme of what you're building, um, but you only want certain users to be able to access the contents of that conversation. So you don't want everyone to get in, um, but you want to filter them based on a password that you've given them. Here's how I would do this. So once again, we start with a standard node, and since this is the capture card lesson, we will uh, we'll, we'll hop into um, classic capture card. So we'll say raw input, um, and again, this is going to look a lot like the ChatGPT example. So there are two cases that we have to account for here. One is, did our user put in the right password? And the second one is, did our user not put in the right password? So it's like, password is correct or password is not. Um, how would I do this? So if you're, if you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, use the same flow logic cards, the answer is, yeah, absolutely. Um, and what I want to show you here is um, a beautiful experience I had with uh, uh, Patrick. You all remember Patrick from the live streams. He's here in chat. But um, uh, he taught me this, and so I, I must give credit where credit is due. So here, um, earlier in the lessons example, in the condition, you'll remember that I clicked off and I disabled generative AI for this field. I wrote the condition myself because I knew what it had to be. But I'm not a programmer, and if it's not that simple, I can't do it. I have no, like, it's it's beyond my knowledge, and I'm too busy uh, to teach myself programming, but I still want to be able to accomplish uh, these kinds of cool things. So I'll enable generative AI, and hopefully this should cut down my workflow. So what you'll see here is the field above the condition So is called label. Type here to generate suggestions. So think of this. And this is what requires kind of like a reframing in your mind. But this is what I want to happen in natural language. So um, what I'll say here is if user input is the number 1234. So let's say my pin is 1234 and I don't want to um, allow anything else. This is the only thing that I want. And I want to send users down a certain path. When I hit enter, look at that. There's like beautiful code here that I didn't have to write, that I didn't have to do. There was no like, um, there was no de fussing about like, how do I set a password in JavaScript or whatever? Um, I, I'm not even sure what JavaScript is. Uh, <laughs> but we got the beautiful condition here written for us. So if user input is the number 1234, I'll send users down this path. And just to make sure that it worked, I'll send a message that says, um, uh, correct. Now, how do I account for the other cases? So the cases that are like, uh, what do I do for literally everything else that is not the number one, two, three, four? Uh, we do the same thing, but we, um, like earlier, we added the exclamation mark. We just want to negate what's happening here. So in the label as before, I'll say if user input is not the number one, two, three, four, and um, hopefully, if you were paying attention to the previous part of this lesson and you see this exclamation mark, you should know that, uh, oh, I see some negation here. Something is being listed as false. This sounds right. Uh, we're kind of moving in the right direction. Um, thank you, Generative AI, for doing that for me. I didn't have to write it myself. So I'll say standard node. I'll place a simple message that says incorrect, and this way uh, we know it's working. So let's test it out here. So I'll say hi, and I'll place in, hopefully, what, what is the correct pin? Oh, 
And there we go. It's correct. Um, and just to make sure that it's working, we must try all the edge cases. So let's say I put in one, two, three, five, and I made a typo, and I get placed on the incorrect one. Uh, so this is a really fun way. <laughs> what about one, two, three, six? Fine, David, just for you. Um, I will. I will try that as well. <laughs> and it's the incorrect pin again. Um, so the the reason I'm showing you all of this relatively simple tutorial that kind of blew my mind, as David's emoji in chat illustrates, is um, there are uh, ways that you can do things with programming that are really fun that don't require you to be a programmer and that you can use generative AI to kind of just do for you, um, particularly in, in things like writing code. Uh, so both in the execute code card, which I will deal with in a separate lesson, but also in the AI task. Um, and in the uh, in anywhere where like flow logic or programming logic is required, the idea behind BotPress is you can do it yourself because I know that a lot of you are developers and programmers and you're really good at this, but you don't have to learn how to code. Um, so for simple things, as Patrick said, programming is now fully avoidable. So I think the point here is um, the beauty of BotPress is that whether you're an expert or a beginner, we support all of you. So there's no need to um, to wonder like, can I do this or can I not do this? Um, we did this on purpose and we've built BotPress this way because we found that sometimes um, other methods of building bots can be a bit restrictive and how much customizability you have over the code or how much you have the ability to say, hey, I'm a programmer, like I know how to do this. I don't need generative AI. I want to be more specific or I want to do it myself um, or I just want to flex, right? <laughs> and I just want to show my friends that I can do this. Um, for programmers like that, we're here for you. Most of our team are programmers anyways, but also there are tons of you out there like me that are like, hey, I want to build something really cool. And like, you know, I, th I think I'm a smart person, but I don't have time to learn programming because I, you know, do a lot of other things. Uh, so the point is, um, we support all of the, all, all of you here. Um, for complex things, maybe it requires programming. Yeah, it, it, I, it, I would say that um, you could either do a lot of troubleshooting with a generative AI and seeing if it does what you need it to do, um, or alternatively, uh, you could also teach yourself to learn how to program. I think the idea here is like, we're putting all of the options available in front of you, and we don't want to hide any of the options from you. Uh, we we want to give you all of the tools that you need to build the bots that you want. The reason I showed you this example with the pin is that this was a question that came up on Discord that I was like, I'm not a programmer, but can I figure out how to do this as, as like a non-programmer? And, uh, and it was really fun. And, and I think the options here, if you're like a creative person or if what you wanna do is build kind of narrative bots or um, uh, like a story bot, for example, this is a really great way to be like, you've put in the wrong password or you've chosen the wrong adventure or your character has died or it's been like, you know, eaten by a dragon or whatever. Um, I really think there are lots of uh, creative ways to implement features like this um, in your bots in ways that, you know, kind of break the mold or, or whatnot. Uh, okay, I see prompt engineering is the new programming. Yeah, I mean, uh, they can go hand in hand, right? I think uh, we all, you know, happy family, we all live together, and so on and so forth. Okay, um, I think I see a lot of questions in chat. I only have seven minutes left for today's lesson. Um, does anyone have any questions about any of the things that I've shown today, particularly as they pertain to capture cards or uh, receiving information from a user? I want to open up the space for questions. I have one last thing planned if we don't have any, um, but I see, I know, I know there's lots of, um, you all have a lot of questions all the time, so um, I want to open the space for you. Um, while I'm waiting for you all to come up with your questions, um, Connor has a really good point. For more complex things, you can generate the code in box. Press. And then if it doesn't work like you thought it would, you can also use ChatGPT, come back to BotPress. There are lots of tools available to you to support your programming or to support your coding um, that, uh, um, that can enable you to kind of think of yourself as having superpowers without actually having to learn how to program in seven different languages. Um, okay, I see questions about email confirmation. I see questions about API. Um, I'm going to answer the question, however, that is more most closely related to uh, the topic today. So if I don't provide a question for the raw input capture card, is there a timeout to go to the conversation and workflow? This is a beautiful question. We kind of just changed sort of how this works and how we want you to work with the timeout workflow. Um, so uh, again, as I'm sure you've seen, Nara Keru, uh, we do have a timeout workflow. So if your, bot, if your user is like um, uh, not responding and they're unresponsive and you don't want to leave your bot live forever, uh, you'll, they'll get sent automatically down the timeout workflow. 
Now, the place where you can find um, the timeout workflow is here in the Explorer. If you hit the BotPress logo and you open up your chatbot settings, one of the things you'll see is inactivity timeout in minutes. This is new, so if you've been with BotPress for like the last couple of weeks, you probably would not have seen this. Um, so I'm really glad that you asked this question because I get to show you. Um, you now can adjust the default timeout for inactivity. So maybe you want to limit it down to two, which is the, the least amount of time you can put here. Um, you've only given them two minutes to answer a question. Again, I'm all about building creative bots and fun bots. Um, customer service is great. I love that. But there's also uh, no limit to the amount of uh, creativity you can leverage when building bots. So let's say, for example, uh, you're, you're uh, guiding the user through a choose-your-own-adventure story, and they only have two minutes to decide which path to go down um, in a certain dungeon. And then with, uh, otherwise, they'll be mauled by a, a monster. Right, so this is the type of thing where uh, we typically think of timeout as being things like um, uh, make my user answer a question. Otherwise, uh, you know the customer service agent will move on to another person. But there are like you can get super creative with these, and that's what I love about this. So uh, you can adjust the the default timeout to whatever you want it to be here, um, and they'll get sent down that flow if they're being asked for a question. Uh, okay. I see additional questions here. Uh, to get answers from data on Airtable, I think um, someone else can answer the, the Airtable question for you there, Luis, in chat. Uh, bum, bum, bum. How would you create a variable that takes the questions bot press KB can't answer? This is a question that we get very often. Uh, what do I do if um, I can't? Um, what do I do if like my bot is failing and I, I want to learn from my bot's failure um, and I want to be able to like support that? Uh, what I would say here is, bum, bum, bum. Uh, bum, bum, bum. so when you've asked your, so earlier in the lesson, when we asked our user for a question and we, we couldn't answer it from the question, um, when you're asking a user for an input, so let's say I say, what is your question? You can create variables here. So I didn't because I was using event.preview, but what you can do is uh, store that question in a variable here. So. The whole concept of a variable is that it's a, a chunk or like a container that you can store information in. And information can be a user's question, it could be a phone number, it could be their answer to a question. Um, it's really like a, a very wide variety of things. So in this case, the, the, um, the variable could just be user question. And this is where you're storing all of your user's questions if you want to know more about that. Um, OK, so that's how I would do that. Uh, we, are, we are approaching three minutes in, so I'm going to uh, yeah, as Patrick says, a variable is anything you want to save for later. Um, these are available across the workflow. So if you want to reference it at the end of the call or at the end of the conversation, um, you can do that as well. Okay, uh, we have, there's like 120 seconds left. So I'm going to uh, maybe rapid fire some of these questions. Are there plans to add integrations to XYZ thing? Yes, absolutely. Uh, we've open sourced the ability to add integrations. So if you are a developer or a programmer and that's something that interests you and you want an integration that we don't have, you're welcome to build it yourself or <laughs> ask your programming friends to do it. Uh, the, whole, the whole point of BotPress is that uh, we want to support the maximum amount of conversations and people. So if there's uh, a tool that you want to see, um, uh, you can build it via our integration API. Um, so things like Calendly, et cetera, and whatnot. Um, is there a way to collect users' chat history? Yes, this is a, an answer that, uh, two-pronged answer, I'll say. One, it's a feature that we're working to make native to uh, BotPress, so it's definitely something that we've seen a lot of in our future requests channel. But the other thing is, if you are currently interested in implementing this, there's a tutorial on it. Um, it does require you to have a GitHub account or to know how GitHub works. So again, if you want to dip your toes into programming, um, I would uh, I would stay tuned for that. And then finally, uh, this is probably the last question I will take for today, because what a beautiful way to end this call. Is there a way to make the bot initiate the conversation rather than have the user initiate the conversation? Absolutely. Um, currently, this feature is in beta, but we are planning to release it imminently. So I'm going to say like a big wink wink and a big stay tuned. And perhaps you on YouTube in the future when you're watching this, uh, the feature will already be released. So Tony, thank you for that question. Uh, JB, thanks for the wink wink. Um, Stycroft, chat history and export it. Yeah, check out the tutorial that Jeremy uploaded. Um, he should, uh, that should answer there. 
Okay, thank you all for stopping by. I hope that you all enjoy uh, your your weekend upcoming, if that's something that you celebrate, if you celebrate the weekend. Uh, otherwise, happy Friday. I hope that you um, have a wonderful afternoon. I'm going to go have some lunch. Um, I don't have a burrito, but I do have a big bowl of pasta. Um, so that's great for me. And I hope that you, if it's lunchtime where you are or dinner time where you are, um, I hope you think of me while you eat. Um, and together, we will be nourished and sated. <laughs> All right. Uh, bye, everyone. Uh, happy bot building. Cheers.